For 25 years, from 1973 through 1997, an Italian priest named Father Stefano Gobi said that he received locutions from the Blessed Mother. In these messages, she spoke of our times and reiterated the requests she made at Fatima. Although her messages are for everyone, in these messages, she particularly asks priests for greater holiness and to be more active in promoting consecration to her Immaculate Heart. Father Gobi's spiritual director urged him to write down the messages that came to him. In due time, they were published with multiple imprimaturs as thousands of priests, bishops, and cardinals eagerly asked for translations in many languages. This recording is not professional and not for profit. Volunteer readers have undertaken to make these available as audio podcasts. You may purchase the book To the Priests, Our Lady's Beloved Sons at mmp usa.net. Presented here are the messages from 1983, beginning January 1st to December 31st. Message 257, Mother of Hope, January 1, 1983, Feast of Mary, Mother of God. At the beginning of this year, the Church looks to me with confidence and venerates me in the mystery of my divine and universal motherhood. And in the midst of the innumerable sufferings of the present moment, of the great uneasiness of the threats which hang over your future, Raise your eyes to your Heavenly Mother, as to the font of divine mercy, and as a great sign of hope for you. I am the Mother of Hope. This is the theological virtue which must be especially lived in the bloody hours of the purification. In how many ways my adversary seeks to bring you to discouragement, in order to make you harmless, and to weaken the power of my victorious cohort. Do not be afraid, because Satan has already been defeated by Jesus, and every apparent victory of his prepares a great new and real defeat for him. If hatred still causes blood to flow in your streets, if sin chills the souls and hearts of many, if humanity is not returning along the way of love, if rebellion against God becomes greater every day, your trust in the mercy of your Heavenly Father must be all the greater. You must look to me as the sign of your hope. I am the mother of love and of grace, of pardon and of mercy. And therefore, at the beginning of this year, marked by important events in the plan of Providence, I am going along the deserted roads of the world to scatter in the hearts of my children seeds of repentance, of goodness, and of hope. There is such need today of light and of comfort. There is such need at this time for consolation and motherly encouragement for all my children. I look with sorrowful compassion at the innumerable crowds of my sinful children at the young people who have been seduced and betrayed by the society in which they live, at the adults who remain slaves of unbridled egoism and hatred, at the sons of the church who have become slothful through indifference and lack of faith. To all, I repeat today, I am the mother of your hope. The great coldness which covers the world must not discourage you because each day I am spreading everywhere seeds of life and of resurrection. I am the daybreak which precedes the sun. I am the dawn which begins the new day. I am the mother of holy joy. Live in the joy of knowing you are loved by God, who is a father to you. You who are carried by the Spirit as children and sustained by Jesus as his little brothers. In the joy of living in the heart of the Most Holy Trinity and of being safe in the garden of my Immaculate Heart, begin this new year so that all of you 
may live it with me. Message 258 I am asking you for a spiritual childhood. February the 2nd, 1983 Feast of the Presentation of the Child Jesus in the Temple If you consider with love the mystery of the Church commemorates today, beloved sons, you will learn how the consecration you have made to me should be lived. The child Jesus, whom in company with Joseph, my most chaste spouse, after forty days I presented in the temple of the Lord, this truly God, our Savior, the Messiah so long awaited. As a mother, I brought him into this earthly life, yet he is the author of life. He is, for he is the Creator. With my yes, I permitted him to enter into time. Yet he is outside of time, for he is eternal. I hold him in my arms and support him. Yet it is he who upholds all things, for he is omnipresent. In fulfillment of the divine scripture, I carry him into the temple of Jerusalem. Yet he is the fountain of revelation, for he is the eternal word. The Word of the Father, Creator, Omnipotent and Omniscient God, willing to clothe himself in weakness, and subjected himself to the limitations of time, took upon himself the frailty of human nature, and was born of me. Like every infant, he experienced all sorts of needs. How often, while kissing him, with the tenderness of a mother, I said to him, And yet you are the eternal kiss of the Father. And while I caress him, I thought, You are the divine caress, confirming beatitude upon souls. While I clothed him in his little garments, I whispered, It is you who clothe the earth with flowers and the immense universe with stars. And while nourishing him, I sang to him, It is you who provide food for all living creatures. When this maternal love, I call him my son, adoring him in my soul, I prayed to him, You are the son of the Father, his eternal, only begotten, his living word. O oh, penetrate today into the ineffable mystery of the infancy of my Son Jesus, whom I carried in my arms to the temple of the Lord. If you wish to journey along the road of spiritual childhood I have traced out for you, all must travel along this road, even those who are further advanced in age and who occupy important posts, even those who are learned formed by years of study and experience, even those who are rich in culture and who have been called to perform tasks of great responsibility. Allied with your human growth, which unfolds itself over the years, I am asking you for a spiritual childhood, an interior littleness, leading you to robe yourselves in the humility and in the very fragility itself of my child Jesus. I want to see in you the candid hearts of children, knowing no, nothing of egoism and sin, open to love and to giving, expecting everything from the Heavenly Father so as to be able to give everything. I want to see in you the virginal hearts of children, still firmly shut to the snares of deceit and duplicity, opening like flowers to receive the rays of knowledge, truth, and wisdom. I want to see you, the docile wills of little ones, like fragile clay ready to let themselves be formed with trust and abandonment, wills which must be molded by the good and the true strengthening themselves by pursuing what is good and what is beautiful. Oh, this way of spiritual childhood must 
of necessity be transversed by you, beloved sons, if you wish to live in a perfect manner the consecration to my Immaculate Heart. It is only in this way that I can carry you, like my infant Jesus, and offer you in the temple of the Lord for the realization of the designs of love and mercy he has upon you for the salvation of all my children scattered throughout the world. Message 259 Love One Another February 11, 1983 Feast of Our Lady of Lourdes Come in procession. I told the simple child Bernadette when I appeared to her in the humble grotto of Massabea. Why did I make this request? Because I want all my children to walk together, united in prayer and in love. Today my adversary is trying in every way to divide you, to isolate you, to set you against one another. He who from the beginning was the father of lies and the sower of hatred seeks more and more to break up your fraternal unity. Thus it is that often, even under this specious appearance of good, one rises against another. This group struggles with that group in an endless quest for self-assertion that leaves so many good efforts fruitless. I want you to walk together toward me, because I am the mother of all, and because I want to form all of you together in prayer, in penance, and your reciprocal love. In these times it is more than ever necessary to live the new commandment given you by Jesus on Holy Thursday evening during the Last Supper. Love one another as I have loved you. I want to form you in a mutual and reciprocal love. It is necessary to give this testimony of ecclesial charity that unites all in the perfection of love in order to combat the tactics of division and isolation used by my adversary. Come to me, all of you. Make your way along the difficult paths of your times, praying together, giving praise together, and loving one another. Come to me, therefore, not in isolation or in division, but in procession, strengthening those who are weak, leading on those who have come to a standstill. Come to me, because I wish to lead all of you in unity to my Son, present in the Eucharist. Jesus is present in the sacrament of the Eucharist to help you build this unity of yours, to give you an example of how one must love in total giving to all one's brothers. Come to me together, therefore, that I may bring you to Jesus in the sacrament of the Eucharist, awaiting you in this silent immolation, really present among you in all the tabernacles of the world. Then you will be able to accomplish what I am asking of you for the realization of my maternal designs of salvation. Message 260 The Path of Penance March 5th, 1983 First Saturday of the month, end of Lent Beloved sons, follow me along the path of penance. The weapons with which you are to fight my battle are those of prayer and penance. Today I want to show you the path of penance which is to be traversed by each of you. The first stage is that of renunciation and self-denial. It is necessary to renounce oneself, as well as all disordered attachments, passions, immoderate desires, ambitions, even in your apostolic labors. You are never to seek success and human approval. Rather, have a love for being hidden, for an apostolate carried out in silence, in humility, and the daily and faithful fulfillment of your duties. In this way you will mortify egoism, which constitutes your greatest peril. 
the easiest and most customary of the snares by which my adversary attempts to impede your journey. Then you will become free interiorly, and it will be e easy for you to discern in the light the will of God, and you will find yourselves more suitably disposed to carry it to perfection. The second stage is that of carrying one's cross properly. This cross is made up of the difficulties one encounters when one desires to fulfill solely the will of God, because this involves the task of daily fidelity to the duties of one's state in life. It is a fidelity in which even the very smallest tasks are performed with perfection. Everything is done in the fullness of love. Every moment of the day is lived in fulfilling the divine will. How precious above all for you, my beloved sons, is this second stage of suffering. In this you are shaped into the likeness of Jesus crucified, and this interior crucifixion will take place each day and in every moment of your priestly day in moments of prayer which is so greatly necessary and which must be the center of your life. In that most precious moment of the celebration of Holy Mass, when with Jesus you too are interior immolated for the life of the world, in your fidelity to the priestly duties proper to the ministry of each one, in evangelization, in catechizing, in teaching, in the apostolate of charity, with each person you meet, especially the very poor, the lonely and forsaken, those who feel themselves despised and rejected by all. In your priestly apostolate, never seek to please yourselves or to procure some personal advantage. Give yourselves always with the inexhaustible force of love, and do not let ingratitude stop you or misunderstandings stand in your way. Indifference should not make you hesitate, nor should lack of cooperation cause you to become weary. It is above all in your priestly sufferings that souls can be forgotten by you to the life of grace. It is above all in your priestly suffering that souls can be begotten by you to the life of grace and of salvation. The third stage is that of following my son Jesus towards Calvary. During his life, how often I found him turning his glance with desire towards Jerusalem, where he would one day go to be betrayed, arrested, judged by his own, condemned, scourged, crowned with thorns, and crucified. How greatly Jesus longed for this moment. He was always journeying toward the cons consummation of this task, of love and immolation for you. Therefore you, my beloved, who are his priest, you too are called to follow him each day towards the consummation of your paschal immolation for the salvation of all. Never lose courage. Today the voices of condemnation are for you the shouts of those who reject and challenge you. Sins committed, but then justified, and no longer atoned for, are for you the painful strokes of the scourge. The errors which threaten to estrange great numbers of souls from the faith are for you the crown of thorns. Today, to remain faithful to your calling is to follow the stern path that leads to Calvary. The obstacles found today in staying united and obedient in all things to the Pope and to the hierarchy united with him, the lack of understanding on the part of even of your brothers, the sense of being pushed aside with which you are often overwhelmed are for you the painful falls. But the entrusting of yourselves to my Immaculate Heart by means of your consecration is today for you the meeting with your mother so full of sorrows. Together from now on, let us go forward in the perfect imitation of Jesus who invites us to follow him on the way of the cross. Some of you will even have to shed your blood in the decisive moment of this bloody purification. 
Beloved sons, you see now described for you the road you must travel to reach a genuine experience of conversion. It is the simple and evangelical road pointed out to you by my son Jesus when he told you, He who wishes to come after me, let him renounce himself, take up his cross each day, and follow me. Along this path, evangelical and sacerdotal, your Heavenly Mother wishes to lead you. Message 261 Open Wide the Gates to Christ March 25, 1983 Feast of the Annunciation of the Lord and Opening of the Holy Year of the Redemption Beloved Sons, today live this moment of grace which the heart of Jesus has prepared for you. It is his feast day. Today adore the mystery of his coming among you in my virginal womb. The eternal word of the Father assumed his human nature, permitting him to become a man like you, your true brother. At this same moment, humanity was redeemed. Weakness found its support. Poverty was ennobled and for every human being the gate of his true supernatural and divine greatness was thrown open. But it is also my feast day, the feast of the Son conceived in me by the work of the Holy Spirit, is also that of the mother who gave him life, preserving forever the ineffable charm of perpetual virginity. His yes to the Son of the Father, my yes, of the mother to the son, united us wholly and forever after in the perfect realization of the divine will. Since neither holocaust nor sacrifices were acceptable, then I said, I come, O God, to do your will. But today, my son, O sons, is also your feast day. At that same instant in which the Word became incarnate in my virginal womb, there sprang into being the real and practical possibility that each of you might become true sons of God, brothers of Jesus, recipients of the great gift of His redemption. Also, at this very moment of the Incarnation, I became for all of you a true mother in the supernatural order, mother of your divine life. For this reason today, following an inspiration of the Holy Spirit, experienced in a moment of intense prayer, my Pope is opening the Holy Door and beginning the Jubilee Year of the Redemption. The Redemption had its beginning at the moment of the Incarnation of Jesus. It continued throughout His life and culminated in the sacrifice of His body offered for you and that of His blood shed for you a sacrifice consummated on the summit of Calvary and still renewed mystically upon the altar. Let all correspond to this extraordinary period of grace, which the merciful love of Jesus has prepared for this generation, so remote and perverse, so rebellious and endangered, so dominated by Satan and the spirits of evil, and consequently in immense need of being saved. This holy year becomes the final effort of the divine heart of Jesus and of my immaculate heart to make all of you walk the road of a return to God in sincere repentance for your sins and with a serious commitment to conversion, such as will lead to your active works of justice and charity, of goodness and giving for the good of all. Today my maternal summons becomes urgent. Through you, my beloved sons, I wish to address it to all my children, to those of my poor children who are straying, because they have been seduced by the atheism that is prevailing everywhere, and who live in a continual and obstinate rejection of God. I appeal beseechingly, return to the God of your salvation and of your peace. To those of my poor children who are sinners, seduced by evil, by hatred and violence, I repeat with the heartfelt lament of a mother, return to God who waits you with the love of a father. 
Let yourselves be washed in the precious blood and purified by the infinite mercy of my Son, Jesus. To the children of the Church, today, living the hour of its agony and its redemptive passion, I repeat my maternal invitation to walk the road of love and unity, of fidelity and holiness of prayer and penance. To all of humanity, with the strength of an anguished mother who sees the mortal dangers threatening it, I want to cry out, Open wide the gates to Christ who is coming. He alone is God with you. He alone is your Redeemer. He alone is your Savior. If you welcome my invitation, there will soon come upon you the new era of justice and peace, and my Immaculate Heart will experience its triumph, beholding all of you advancing along the road of the glorification of the Father, the imitation of the Son, and full communion with the Holy Spirit. Message 262 All is accomplished. April 1st, 1983, Good Friday. All is accomplished. These were the last words before the loud cry with which my son Jesus gave up his spirit. Linger today with me beneath the cross, beloved sons, to understand the meaning of these words of his. It is Good Friday. It is the day of his passion and of his death upon the cross. It is the precious moment of your redemption. Let us enter into the recesses of the heart of Jesus to taste the bitterness of his soul and to penetrate the profound mystery of his immolation. Everything was accomplished at the moment his body was immolated and his blood was shed for you. In his life, everything had been ordered toward his supreme moment. On each day of his earthly life, how greatly he had desired to consummate this, his pasch of passion and death, on your behalf. Today I am to be found beneath the cross on which my son Jesus lived his tremendous agony with John, who represents all of you close by. In union of soul with Jesus, with whom I am intimately associated, in his redemptive work, let us together retrace the moments that led him to its perfect accomplishment, the joyous moment of the Annunciation, when the word of the Father became incarnate in my virginal womb, assumed the body, prepared for him, enabling him to begin immediately his precious work of redemption. The radiant day of his birth in the poor little shed in Bethlehem, when I could already see the signs in his infant's tender frame of the true Lamb of God, called to offer himself in a perfect sacrifice for the salvation of the world. After returning from exile enduring, endured in Egypt, the serene years of his childhood, when each day I watched him open himself up like a flower to the sun of beauty, of grace and divine wisdom, the long years of his adolescence, during which I saw his body grow, that body which was reflected the synthesis of every human perfection, intent on daily labor, marked by perspiration and fatigue. Oh, frequently in spirit, I could already see his hands and feet pierced by wounds and his body covered with blood. And then I would bend over him with the renewed tenderness of a mother. In short years of his public life, when he announced to all the gospel of salvation, curing and pardoning, healing wounds and dispelling illnesses, pardoning sins and performing innumerable miracles, how many times near to me his mother, to whom he confided everything, he went in spirit to the summit of Calvary, and together with me lived the moment of his sorrowful departure. All is accomplished. And Jesus seeks to prepare his disciples for the scandal of this moment. The Son of Man must go up to Jerusalem, where he will be handed over to the pagans. 
and will be spat upon, scourged, condemned, and crucified. But on the third day he will rise again. Now I see him hanging on the cross, and I behold his hands and feet, torn by terrible wounds, the crown of thorns opening fissures of blood that stream down and disfigure his countenance. And while his body is shaken with tremendous spasms of fever and agony, his lips open once again for his last words, All is accomplished. The will of the Father has now been done. Every circumstance of his life has been oriented towards this perfect fulfillment. His work is here summed up in the deed toward which it was ever directed, in the divine gift, the ineffable and precious gift of the redemption. Like him, you too, beloved sons, have been prepared by me for this supreme moment, so that the Father's design may be accomplished in this new hour of redemptive passion for the Church. Everything in your life has had this profound meaning. Read with me, the Mother of Sorrows, in the sealed book of your existence. In it, everything has been prepared by God and arranged by me with love as I did with my son Jesus. In a like manner, I can help you too to accomplish today the Father's will. Love all with a heart that is open and generous. Bring health to the sick. Close the gaping wounds. Bestow grace and peace. Forgive sins. And prepare yourselves to ascend with me your own Calvary. Message 263 Let Nothing Disturb Your Peace April 3, 1983 Easter Sunday Jesus has arisen. Alleluia! Today I communicate to you and to all your brother priests and to my beloved children the joy experienced by my heart when Jesus came into the little room in which I was staying and in the divine splendor of his glorified body, leaned down to implant a kiss upon the face of his mother, while in profound adoration I bathed the mark of his luminous wounds with tears of joy. Peace to you, peace to all. With my risen son I repeated again to you, let nothing disturb your peace. Not the world in which you are living, rebelling against God, perverted and in the hands of the evil one. Jesus has already overcome the world. Not the darkened and divided church into which have come idolatry and apostasy. Jesus loves his spouse with a divine love, and in these moments of his purification, he is closer to it than ever. Not the disconcerting succession of events, not the persecutions, the fratricidal struggles, not the fire and the red scourge that is already spelling out over the world. Jesus, risen and alive, is among you. He is guiding the vicissitudes of the world and of history according to the design of his merciful love for the salvation of all of his redeemed brothers. Therefore, in Jesus' life and resurrection, peace to you in a joy that is pure and supernatural, peace to all in the paschal joy of Christ, to the Pope and to all, my blessing in the name of the glorified Father, the risen Son, and the Holy Spirit, bestowed upon you as a gift. Message 264 This Month of May May 1st, 1983 Feast of St. Joseph the Worker During this month of May, try to live more intensely the consecration you have made to my Immaculate Heart, beloved sons, for it is only in this way that I can be venerated by each of you. Bring me little flowers of mortification to console my great sorrow in seeing all the appeals 
addressed to humanity for a return to God, going unheeded. How greatly saddened is Jesus by the great number who are traveling the road of sin, of impurity, of corruption, and unbridled egoism. For those poor deceased children of mine, offer the assistance of your penance and your mortification. On each day of the month consecrated to me, give me little flowers of silence and docility, of complete availability, of humility and patience, of meekness, of your renunciation of comforts, and the gratification of the senses. In this way, you will walk the road of self-contempt, affecting in yourself the renunciation of the world and its seductions that constitutes the most important daily obligation assumed on the day of your baptismal and sacerdotal consecration. Give me the garlands of your rosaries, recited more frequently and with a greater intensity. Gather the religious and the faithful around you in cynicals of unceasing and fervent prayer offered with me. At this time, above all, I am asking you to pray with fervor and joy by means of the Holy Rosary. It is the weapon which is to be used by you today in fighting and winning this bloody battle. It is the golden chain that binds you to my heart. It is the lightning rod that will keep far from you and from those who are dear to you the fire of the chastisement. It is the sure means of having me close to you. Finally, I ask you to renew often and to live fully the consecration to my immaculate and sorrowful heart. Enter at once into this refuge to be protected by me. My protection should become ever more manifest to all, because the days in which you are living are, are marked by great sufferings, and for so many of my poor children, who are so menaced today, the danger of being lost is increasing. Let this month of May, especially consecrated to me, be a precious occasion for you to entrust yourselves to me, with the offering of your little flowers of mortification, the frequent recitation of the Holy Rosary, and a more intense living of the consecration to my heart. <clears throat> Message 265 New Heavens and a New Earth May 22, 1983 Feast of Pentecost Everything is about to be fulfilled, beloved sons, whom for so long I have called to enter into my refuge in order to second in my plan of salvation and mercy. For this reason, I gather you into the cynical of my heart to form you in a life, in a life of prayer with me to a life of mutual love, of giving, and of holiness. In this new cynical, let us together invoke the gift of the Holy Spirit, who coming from the Father and the Son, through my maternal intercession, again today, wishes to pour out his fullness on the suffering church, on all humanity shrouded in darkness. Under the influence of his mighty work of love, the desert of this world can be entirely renewed by an immensely profusion of the dew of grace, and thus transformed into a garden of life and beauty, wherein it may please God once again to display his reflection. Give us, O Spirit of love, new heavens and a new earth, where the most holy trinity will be loved and glorified, where men can live together as in a single large family, where the wounds of egoism and of hatred, of impurity and injustice, may be entirely healed. Give us, O Spirit of love, a church renewed by the irresistible force of your divine action, strengthening what is contorted, bending what is inflexible, 
healing what is wounded, bringing water to what is parched, throwing open what is closed. Give us, O Spirit of love, a church faithful to the gospel, a herald of truth, resplendent in great sanctity. Give us, O Spirit of love, a humble church, evangelical, poor, chaste, and merciful. By your divine fire, burn away whatever in it is imperfect. Despoil it of so many human means of power. Free it from compromise with the world in which it lives and which it should save. Cause it to come forth from its purification completely renewed, ever more beautiful without stain or wrinkle. In imitation of Mary, its immaculate mother and your most loving spouse, it is only in the triumph of my immaculate heart that the task I have entrusted to my movement of priest will be fully accomplished. Message 266, The Gate of Heaven June the 11th, 1983 Feast of the Immaculate Heart of Mary My Immaculate Heart is the gate of heaven through which passes the spirit of love of the Father and of the Son to come to you and to renew the whole world. For this reason I am inviting you today to enter even further into the depths of this, my heavenly garden. You will then be covered with the light of the Most Holy Trinity. In my Immaculate Heart, the Father gazes upon you with complacency, seeing that you have been formed by me to glorify him in a most perfect manner. My maternal task is to help each of you realize in all its fullness the design of the Father, who created you to participate in his being, his love, and his glory. Accordingly, I help you to open yourselves to the sunshine of God's love, which makes you grow in what is beautiful and good and true. The glory of God manifests itself in all its divine harmony through the ordered rhythm of your existence. How many mysteries, modulations, vibrate through the m melody of your prayer, your suffering, your silence, of all the virtues that should com comprise the epic poem of your existence. In your life, you are opening your heart to the chant of the glory of the Father, who would have his complacency reflected in you while, by the mystery of his paternity, you are being generated into a new fullness of life and joy. In my immaculate heart, the Son assimilates you to make you more completely resemble himself and to associate you with his own life. It is in my heavenly garden that the wonder of your transformation takes place. It is above all through me that this happens, through me because Jesus, finding me to be as it were the purest and most supple clay, molded me so perfectly in his image that no other creature will ever be able to produce that image as did your heavenly mother. And so it is that I, though mother, became the daughter of my son, and so it is that I became the first and most perfect of his disciples. And so too it is that while I am leading you to Jesus, I am able to manifest myself to you as a model for imitation. If you want to succeed in living his life in your own, I form you in his likeness in your minds, and I obtain the spirit of wisdom for you to lead you to seek and receive, to meditate upon and to preserve his divine word. In this way it is possible for you to live the gospel with the simplicity of little children, with the fidelity of the martyrs, with the heroism of the saints. I form you in your hearts and bring you to the plenitude of love for God, so that you may love all your brothers with the same divine charity. For this I make you always more sensitive, purer, 
more understanding and merciful, more compassionate and meek, more humble and strong. And every day Jesus enters through the gate of this, my heavenly garden, to experience the great joy of seeing himself imitated and relived by all of you, my sons and his little brothers. In my immaculate heart, the Holy Spirit communicates himself to you in an ever more munificent manner to produce in your souls that union of life and of love which he achieves in your heavenly mother and seeing you in my maternal arms he breathes upon you with the vehemence of love transforming you in sparks of fire flames of grace stars of sanctity and zeal for renewing the firmament of the church he communicates himself to you with his seven holy gifts and makes you suitable instruments for converting the world to the God of mercy and salvation, preparing the kingdom in which Jesus will rule with his divine power and the Father will be everlastingly glorified by all creation. Enter, therefore, through the heavenly gate of my immaculate heart, if you wish to participate in the divine prodigy, the new Pentecost for the Church, and the complete renewal of the world. Message 267 Why I Wanted You Here June the 29th, 1983 This year I have again summoned you here, and from all over Europe you have come to spend these days in a continuing cynical with me. Here my heart is being consoled by you in these times of so much tribulation. How greatly glorified in you is your heavenly mother. I reflect my light in your heart and pour out the fullness of grace upon your souls. I am always close to you. I associate myself with your prayer. I increase your love. I strengthen the bonds that unite you. I rejoice to see you so little and so docile, so prompt to understand and help one another, to walk together along the difficult road of the consecration you have made to me. Why have I wanted you here this year? To make you understand that now you must walk together, united in love, so that you may form but a single entity. During these days, in the cynical of my immaculate heart, I want to form all of you into a single heart and a single soul. The tactic of my adversary is one of hatred and division, where he penetrates by his deceitful and malignant action, he succeeds in bringing rupture, misunderstandings, and antagonism. Even within the church he is making even greater efforts to wound its interior unity. Therefore, I am assembling you from every part of the world to help you love one another, unite with one another, to grow in the perfection of love. I have also summoned you here to make you understand that your public mission is now about to be consummated by your personal and precious immolation. This is the holy year of the redemption accomplished by my Son, Jesus, upon the cross. And now for you too, my Immaculate Heart, once a cradle has become an altar upon which I must fix each of you on the cross, the Father has prepared for you for the salvation of the world. For this reason, my beloved sons, ready yourselves to live with trust and abandonment, the bloody hours now awaiting you, while each day I make you more conformed to Jesus crucified. The errors spreading throughout the church and obscuring her faith are the crown of thorns. Sins committed and not atoned for are the painful lashes. The deluge of impurity is reducing your sacerdotal body to a single wound. The hatred of the world, the lack of understanding, and even the ostracism that surrounds you. These are the nails that transfix you. You have been called to ascend Calvary with me, and there you are to 
be immolated for the salvation of the world. I have also called you here to obtain for you the Holy Spirit, given to you in superabundance by the Father and the Son, through your unceasing prayer, united to my maternal intercession. He will transform you into ardent flames of zeal for the glory of God, and into courageous witnesses of Jesus in these times which have become so evil. The struggle between your heavenly mother and her adversary has now entered its decisive phase. The woman clothed with the sun is with her cohorts, openly waging war against the cohort submissive to the red dragon, at whose service is placed to the black beast. Come up from the sea. The red dragon is Marxist atheism, which has now conquered the whole world, and which has induced humanity to build a new civilization of its own without God. In consequence, the world has become a cold and barren desert, Immersed in the ice of hatred and in the darkness of sin and impurity, the black beast is also masonry, which has infiltrated the church and attacks it, wounds it, and seeks by its subtle tactics to demolish it. Like a poisonous cloud, its spirit seeps in everywhere to paralyze faith, extinguish apostolic ardor, and produce an even greater alignment from Jesus and his gospel. Apostles of these last times has come to fight with courage under the command of your heavenly leader. To discord and division, I wish to respond through you, strengthening your communion and the love which unites you so that you will become a single entity. To the flood of sin and iniquity, I respond with your priestly immolation, and to achieve this, I help you to ascend Calvary, and I place you upon the cross upon which each must be immolated. To the attack of the red dragon and the black beast, I respond by summoning all to the battle, so that God may be ever more glorified, and the church in its children healed from the wounds of infidelity and apostasy. Pray, love, do penance, walk the road of humility and littleness, of contempt for the world and for yourselves, following Jesus who loves you and to lead you. Soon victory will be resplendent everywhere. Through the triumph of my Immaculate Heart, there will come upon you the glorious reign of Jesus, who in his spirit of love will bring all of creation to the glorification of the Father, and at last the face of the earth will be renewed. Wherefore, before you go down from this mountain, I look upon you one by one with maternal tenderness and fill your hearts with graces that you will understand only later on. I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Message 268 the Holy Mountain, July 16, 1983, Feast of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Ascend with me, beloved sons, the holy mountain of your perfect conformity to Jesus crucified. How many times my son Jesus lovingly ascended the mountains, impelled by an ardent desire for solitude and silence, to live with greater intensity his union with the Father. From the time of his adolescence, he often sought refuge in the hills surrounding Nazareth. It was on a mountain that he promulgated the evangelical law of the Beatitudes. It was on Mount Tabor that he experienced the ecstasy of his transfiguration in Jerusalem, a city on a mountain. He gathered his own together for the Last Supper. He endured the sorrowful hours of his intimate interior agony. On Mount Calvary, he consummated his sacrifice on the Mount of Olives. His final separation from his disciples took place in the glorious ascension into heaven. Today, ascend with me the holy mountain, which is Jesus Christ, so that you can enter into a life of intimacy with him. In these times of my decisive battle, 
each of you has been called to combat, armed with the very light of Christ, because you must be his own presence in the world. For this reason, ascend the holy mountain of his wisdom, which he revealed to you, if you remain little, humble and poor, your minds will be drawn towards his divine mind, and you will penetrate into the secret of truth revealed in the Holy Scripture. You will be captivated by the beauty of his gospel, and with courage you will pronounce the word of Jesus to the men of today, that word which alone illumines and can lead to the fullness of the truth. Ascend the holy mountain of his heart, so that you may be transformed by the burning bush of his divine charity. Then your hearts will be dilated and molded after his, and in the world you will be the very pulsations themselves of, his heart, of the heart of Jesus, which seeks above all those who are farthest away and wishes to envelop all in the flames of his infinite mercy. You will become meek and humble of heart. You will be truly able to love. You will pour balm on the grievous wounds of the suffering and of those most in need. You will give your priestly help especially to those who have lost themselves along the road of iniquity and sin. In this way, with your love, you will bring an immense number of my children to the path of salvation. Ascend the holy mountain of his divine humanity in order to become reflections of his perennial immolation for you, his eyes in your eyes, his hands in your hands, his heart in your hearts, his sufferings in your sufferings, his wounds in your wounds, his cross in your cross. In this way you will become the potent presence of Jesus, who by means of you can still today work mightily to bring all to salvation. In this salvation is the triumph of my Immaculate Heart. It is to be found the conclusion of the battle to which I have summoned you, and the realization of my heralded victory. Therefore, beloved sons, it now becomes more urgent than ever to follow me, your heavenly leader. Ascend with me, then, the holy mountain, that is Christ, to become perfect, perfectly assimilated to him, so that he may live again in each of you in order to bring all men to salvation. Message 269 In the Light of Paradise August 15, 1983 Feast of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary into Heaven Today, beloved sons, I want you to be spiritually here above in Paradise, that I may fill you with trust and hope in the spectacle of your Heavenly Mother assumed, even with her body, into the glory of Heaven. With heart and soul, behold the Paradise that awaits you. Paradise is your true goal. You have not been made for this earthly life that now so greatly absorbs, wearies, and consumes you. Life on earth is a long and sorrowful antechamber through which one must pass before entering the kingdom prepared for you by the Heavenly Father. In this kingdom, my son Jesus is already arranging a place for each of you. The angels joyfully await your arrival and all the saints pray and burn with love in expectation that all of these places will one day be forever occupied and occupied by you. Today, you should look more intently at the paradise awaiting you if you wish to walk in serenity, in hope, and in trust. In the light of paradise, you will better understand the times in which you are living. It is a time of suffering. It is a time of described in the Apocalypse, in which Satan has established in the, reign, the world his reign of hatred and death. Those who are the very poorest, the weakest, the most defenseless, my little ones, are so often overwhelmed by sufferings, sufferings which become greater day by day. Oh, the Lord will shorten the time of trial, mindful, too, of the sorrow and fidelity he sees in you, but that you may be consoled, today you should look up at the paradise prepared for you. 
in the light of the paradise awaiting you, you will be better able to read the signs of your times. The days in which you live are evil, for the hearts of men have become cold and barren, closed tightly by so much egoism no longer capable of love. Humanity is traveling the road of rebellion against God and of obstinate perversity, and so it is that the fruits you are harvesting today are themselves evil, hatred and violence, corruption, impiety, impurity, idolatry. The body is lifted aloft as an idol, and pleasure is sought after as if it were the supreme good. How many signs the Lord sends you to call you to repentance and change of heart? Sickness, misfortune, a virtual flood of incurable ills, ever-widening wars, threats of an imminent harm, lest you despair of these times and to keep you ever astride the path of secure and unshakable faith. It has become urgent for you to live with your gaze upon paradise, where with Jesus your heavenly mother loves you, and in her glorious body she even follows you. In the light of the paradise awaiting you, above all you will know how to fulfill to perfection the design I have for each of you. In these times of the great struggle between the woman clothed with the sun and her adversary, the red dragon, in profound detachment from the world, and from creatures, you will become truly little, trustful, humble, and good. You will walk along the road of contempt for the world and for yourselves. You will be capable of mortifying your senses, and once again you will offer me the gift of your penitence. It is my desire that you also return to the practice of fasting, recommended so much by Jesus in the Gospel. Thus you will become true disciples of Jesus. And in this time of pervasive darkness, you will shed his light around about you. For this reason, I invite you today to look up to paradise, which exults in the mystery of the bodily assumption of your Heavenly Mother, who encourages all and blesses all. Message 270, Mother of the Purification, August 26, 1983, Our Lady of Chastakwa. Beloved children, look with your most merciful eyes at the evils afflicting humanity and the Church today, and you too will shed tears of sorrow and deep compassion. With my heart, love all your brothers, and you will feel the immense suffering of my poor children, as if they were your own. I am the Queen of all nations, and my regency is one of love. I wish to convey the hearts of all to the greatest possible life of union with Jesus in a way that will glorify the Father in the triumph of His Spirit of love. In your lives carry the suffering of the people reduced to slavery by those who reject God and use every means to spread atheism. Poland, of which I have been officially proclaimed queen, is a symbol of this unending and bloody persecution. In these nations, how many are prevented from professing their faith? How many are pushed aside by reason of their fidelity to Jesus and to the Church? For so many years the Red Dragon has extended his dominion over these people and persecuted my children by the most subtle and refined means. Feel in your hearts the deep wounds caused me by the millions of infants slaughtered in the wombs of their mothers, by sin which overabounds and seduces souls, by immorality which, like a terrible cancer, corrupts consciences, by the disorientation of the youthful victims of vice, drugs, and violence, by the breakdown of so many households. Participate, too, in the sufferings of the Church as it lives through the hour of its greatest abandonment. How ailing she is, this my most beloved daughter. In your hearts carry the sufferings of Jesus, and my sufferings as well. For the agonizing condition in which the Church now finds itself in every part of the world, error is being taught and promulgated beneath the ambiguous formulas of a new cultural 
interpretation of truth. The spirit of the world finds welcome. It spreads its malignant influence and leads so many souls to accept sin, to justify it, and to live in it. Loss of faith is becoming a deluge, and in many places of worship the images of the saints have been removed, even those of your heavenly mother. The apostasy has now been spread into every part of a church, betrayed even by some of its bishops, abandoned by many of its priests, deserted by so very many of its children, and violated by my adversary. You, my little child, are to go again into every part of the world and to announce with power my message to all. These are the terrible and painful times of your purification. Never so much as now must you look to me in order to be consoled, to be defended, and to be saved. I am the mother for these times, your times. I am a mother for you in the present hour of purification. Message 271 Ministers of the Redemption September 3, 1983 first Saturday of the month. Beloved sons, respond to my mother, my maternal invitation to become the faithful ministers of the redemption accomplished by my son Jesus. To you has been entrusted the precious task of baptizing and pardoning, of announcing the gospel, of renewing in the celebration of Holy Mass. The sacrifice cons consummated upon Calvary of communicating grace by means of the sacraments instituted by Jesus. Cause his blood to draw down once again and wash away all the sins of the world, each day with love and with sorrow, with the intimate participation of your own lives. Celebrate the holy sacrifice of the Mass. It has the power to make reparation and to destroy so much evil in the world. With the heart of Jesus, have love for all your brothers, and my children. How many of them are walking the roads of this world like sheep without a shepherd, exposed to every kind of danger? How many have been wounded by sin, made into slaves of evil, victims of hate? How many there are who are poor, who are exploited, weak, suffering? All the sufferings of my children are like a desperate cry for help reaching up to me and deeply wounding my mother's heart. I am with you, one and all, by all the byways of the world. With a maternal mercy, I help those of my little ones who find themselves in greater need. I save the perishing, restore health to the sick, console the afflicted, encourage the downhearted, raise up those who have fallen and find those who have lost the way. This is the hour of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of your Heavenly Mother. It is the hour of the great miracle of divine mercy. But I wish to act through you, my beloved sons. For this, I invite all of you to consecrate yourselves to my Immaculate Heart. I can then make you perfect ministers of the redemption accomplished by Jesus. From this city on the Pacific Ocean, the dividing line, as it were, between East and West, I call all of you to respond to my design, a design that from day to day will make itself more apparent. The Church and the world are to see wrought the greatest of the miracles of the Divine Mercy. Message 272 The Smallest of My Children September 8, 1983 Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary The smallest of my children From every part of the world I am gathering the smallest of my children to assemble them in my cohort and to place them in the depths of my immaculate heart. Beloved sons, listen to their voices as they cry for your help. Go forward to meet them. Take them into your arms and carry them all to your Heavenly Mother. To me, little ones, are all those infants who, already conceived, are being put to death purposely while still in the wombs of their mothers. 
the love and the anxiety of your Heavenly Mother and of the Church for their salvation with, with the innocent blood of being spilled by those who despise and dispose and disobey the law of God, are a baptism of blood and desire, saving all of them. To me, little and defenseless ones are also the children who live and grow up, yet are educated in errors and top values which are really transgressions of God's law. To me, little ones, are those who are young and just beginning to venture out into life, but in a world reduced to a desert because of its want of love. They are being in initiated into lives of the most bitter experience with every sort of evil. To me, little ones are the poor, those who lack means for getting along in life, who have neither shelter nor work, or are often exploited. To me, little ones are all of my persecuted children, those who are rejected, oppressed. They are those who suffer, who weep, who are alone, who have neither help nor comfort. Little ones are all of, the, all of those, my children, who are victims of sin and hatred, who travel along the roads of life without hope or trust, who can help to save these poor sinful children of mine. Today, around my crib, beloved sons, bring me a wreath of all those my infant children that I may gather them together as a bouquet of flowers, which you are pleased to offer me on the glorious feast of the birth of your Heavenly Mother. Message 273 I am beneath the cross. September 15, 1983 Feast of Our Lady of Sorrows Look upon your sorrowful mother, beloved sons, beneath the cross upon which Jesus is hanging upon which he is in agony, and upon which he dies. From that moment, this has been my place to remain beneath the cross of each of my sons. I am beneath the cross of the first of my beloved sons, Pope John Paul II, who loves and prays and suffers because of the agony now being lived by the Church, and because of the fate that awaits poor humanity. Do you not recognize that the scourge of war has already come upon you? How many innocent victims will be called upon to endure unspeakable sufferings? I am beneath the cross being carried today by the bishops who remain faithful, while the number of those who prefer to go their own ways grow ever greater, heedless of and refusing to follow the Holy Father, whom Jesus has placed at the very foundation of his church, they are preparing another church, one separated from the Pope, and this will cause a further scandal, that of sorrowful division. I am beneath a cross, carried today by my beloved sons, the priests, who have been called to live in absolute fidelity to Jesus, to his gospel, and to his church. Often they must endure the interior martyrdom of feeling themselves misunderstood, ridiculed, and even rejected by their own confreres. I am beneath the cross of consecrated souls who wish to live their consecration in fidelity, in opposition to the spirit of the world, which has now entered into so many religious houses, bringing them into tepidity, impurity, laxity, and the pursuit of every kind of worldly satisfaction. I am beneath the cross of so many of the faithful, who have received my invitation courageously and with generosity. Amid enormous difficulties, they hope and have trust in me. In the thick and great trials, they pray with faith and perseverance. Amid countless sufferings, in the spirit of reparation, they offer whatever the Lord orders in their lives. I am beneath the cross of my poor sinful children, to lead them back to the road of repentance and reconciliation, beneath the cross of the sick, to bring them comfort and res resignation, of those who have wandered away, to bring them back to the way of salvation, of those who are soon to die, to help them do so in the grace and love of God. Oh, in these times, 
in which sufferings and tribulations are multiplying more than ever, before I am your sorrowing and consoling mother, I am here beneath your cross and that of all my children to suffer with you, to pray with you, to offer the Father together with you the precious contribution of your personal collaboration in the redemption accomplished by my Son, Jesus. Message 274 The Role of the Angels September 29, 1983 The Feast of the Archangel Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael Today the Church is celebrating the Feasts of the Archangels, Michael, Gabriel, and Raphael. It is also your feast, beloved sons, because the angels of the Lord have a very important part to play in my victorious plan. See now what a role is theirs under my command. They are fighting a terrible battle against Satan and all the wicked spirits. It is a struggle, proceeding more particularly on the level of spirits fought with intelligence and a perfect addition to the plans of the two great opposing leaders, the woman clothed with the sun and the red dragon. To St. Gabriel has been given the task of clothing you with the strength of God himself. He fights against the most dangerous of the snares of Satan, which is that of weakening you, bringing you to discouragement and to weariness. How many of you have stopped along the way of your consecration you have made to me because of this human weakness of yours? It is a weakness that leads you to doubt, to uncertainty, to fear, to uneasiness. This is the temptation of my adversary to render you ineffective, locked up inside yourself, hampered by your own problems incapable of any real apostolic offensive. The Archangel Gabriel has the task of helping you to grow in trust, on clothing you in the strength of God. And so it is that every day he leads you along the path of courage, of firmness of faith, of a faith that is heroic and pure. To St. Raphael is given the task of pouring balm upon your wounds. How often Satan succeeded in wounding you with sin, harming you by his deceitful allurements. He makes you feel the weight of your misery, of your incapacity and frailty, and stops your advance along the path of perfect giving. Then also to St. Raphael is given the task of accompanying you along the road I have traced out for you, supplying you with the medicine that will heal your spiritual ailments. Each day he makes your footsteps more secure, your resolutions less uncertain, your acts of love and your apostolate more courageous. He makes your response to my wishes more decisive and your minds more attentive to my maternal plan, and you fight your battle, strengthened by his heavenly balm. To St. Michael is given the task of defending you from the frightful attacks Satan unleashes against you. In these times, my beloved sons, who have accepted my invitation and are consecrated to my Immaculate Heart, and all my children who have come to be part of my victorious cohort, are targets assailed with particular fury and ferocity on the part of my adversary and yours. Satan attacks you on the spiritual field with every kind of temptation and suggestion to bring you to evil, to disorientation, to doubt, and to distrust. Often he uses his favorite weapon, which is that of diabolical suggestion and impure temptation. He attacks you with terrible snares, frequently forcing you to a position of danger, even physically. He makes attempts upon your life and personal safety. It is Archangel Michael, patron of the Universal Church, who with his great power intervenes and joins combat to liberate you from the evil one and his dangerous snares. For this reason I invite you to invoke his protection with a daily recital 
of that brief but so very efficacious prayer of exorcism composed by Pope Leo the Thirteenth. You see, now that the angels of the Lord have an important role in the battle plan for the present conflict, you should always live in their company. Theirs is a function which is inavailable and irreplaceable. They are close to you, engaged in the same struggle. They give you force and courage, heal your many wounds, defend you from evil, and with you they form the mightiest part of the victorious cohort commanded by the heavenly leader. Message 275 The Dragon Will Be Shackled October 7, 1983 Feast of Our Lady of the Holy Rosary Beloved sons, in the battle in which you are daily engaged against Satan and his crafty and dangerous seduc seductions and against the mighty armies of evil, apart from the special help given you by the angels of the Lord, it is necessary for you to employ a weapon which is both secure and invincible. This weapon is your prayer. With prayer you are always able to snatch back from the enemy whatever territory he has conquered, and to make blossoms of goodness spring up on the desert of sin and evil, and especially you can free an immense number of souls whom Satan has succeeded in imprisoning. Prayer possesses a potent force and starts a chain reaction in good that is far more powerful than any atomic reaction. The prayer of my predilection is the Holy Rosary. For this reason, in many apparitions, I always ask that it be recited. I unite myself with those who say it. I request it from all with solicitude and maternal preoccupation. Why is the Holy Rosary so efficacious? Because it is simple prayer, a humble one, and it forms you spiritually in littleness, in meekness, in simplicity of heart. Today Satan is successfully conquering everything with a spirit of pride and of rebellion against God, and he is terrified by those who follow your Heavenly Mother along the road of littleness and humility. While this prayer is despised by the great and the proud, it is recited with so much love and so much joy by my little ones, by the poor, by children, by the humble, the suffering, by the many, many faithful souls who have welcomed my invitation. Satan's pride will again be conquered by the humility of little ones, and the red dragon will find himself decisively humiliated and defeated when I bind him not by a great chain, but by a very frail cord, the Holy Rosary. It is a prayer that you say together with me. When you invite me to pray for you, I accede to your request and mingle my voice with yours. I unite my prayer with yours. Consequently, it becomes more and more efficacious because your Heavenly Mother is suppliant omnipotence. What I ask for, I always obtain, because Jesus can never say no to what His Mother requests of Him. It is a prayer that unites the voice of the Church and of humanity, because it is said in the name of all and never exclusively on behalf of a single person. By contemplating its mysteries, you are led to understand the plan of Jesus, as spelled out in all his life, from the incarnation to the consummation of his glorious task, and thus you penetrate ever more profoundly into the mystery of the redemption. And you begin to understand this mystery of love through your Heavenly Mother, moving through the passageway of her heart. <clears throat> you gain possession of immense treasure, of the divine and burning charity of the heart of Christ. In the Rosary you become formed for the perfect glory of the Father, with a frequent repetition of the prayer Jesus taught you, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. 
you are also formed for the everlasting adoration of the Most Holy Trinity with a recital of the Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> Today your Heavenly Mother asks you to make use of this Holy Rosary as the most efficacious weapon for fighting in the great battle under the command of the woman clothed with the sun. Give your support to my invitation. Multiply your cynicals of prayer and fraternity. Consecrate yourselves to my Immaculate Heart. Frequently recite the Holy Rosary. Then the powerful red dragon will be shackled by this chain, <clears throat> and his margin of action will become ever more restricted. In the end, he will be left impotent and harmless. The miracle of the triumph of the Immaculate Heart will be manifest to all. Message 276 The Leader of a Single Cohort November 1st, 1983 Feast of All Saints Beloved Sons, an invaluable help for fulfilling, for fulfilling the task I have entrusted to you is bestowed upon you by those of your brothers who have already arrived here above in paradise and now participate in its beatitude without end. Today is the Feast of All Saints, and you should look up at all of them with joy, with trust, and with great hope. How many of these brothers of yours have lived through difficult, identical to your own, endured the same sufferings, shared in your sorrows? They responded to my maternal invitation and consecrated themselves to my Immaculate Heart. Here above they form a great crown of light, which together with your mother opens in an everlasting chant of praise to the Most Holy Trinity. Those who, while on earth, lived as my children, listened to me with docility, and followed me along the road, I myself pointed out to them. Now are components of most luminous crown around my Immaculate Heart, a crown of love, of joy, and of glory. How many of these, my children, have you known during these years? Now they are closer than ever to you, fighting the same battle under the command of the Heavenly Leader. My mother's heart today unites you in an extraordinary communion of life with all of your brothers who are in paradise and with those who now possess certitude as to their salvation but are still suffering the moment of their personal purification in purgatory. This is an immense part, invisible but most valuable of my cohort, because my holy children are now clothed with the very power of God and with the strength that is my own, while the souls in purgatory can give me the contribution of their sufferings and their unceasing prayer. For this reason you need never feel alone. Strengthen your bonds with the saints in heaven and with those still being purified in purgatory. They are very near to you. They see all your difficulties. They are aware of your terrible snares being laid for you by my adversary, and they help you always in a very efficacious way. Look up today to all those who have already preceded you into everlasting life, in the seal of faith, and are now awaiting you with love and with joy. I am the mother and the queen of all the saints. I am the leader of a single cohort. I am the mother of the entire church, the militant, the suffering, and the triumphant church. And my immaculate heart vibrates with joy to see you so united in the fraternal bonds of a single communion of life and of love. From paradise, together with your brothers, these my beloved sons, who are already here above, and with all the souls still praying and suffering in purgatory, I bless you today in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Message 277 Along the Roads of Africa November 21st 1983, Feast of the Presentation of Mary in the Temple. 
Enter into the temple of my Immaculate Heart, beloved sons. In these times, your mother is exerting her action of a solicitous admonition in all parts of the world to bring you to walk along the good road, that of love, of a return to God, your Redeemer. Everywhere I am revealing myself to little ones, to the simple, to the poor, to the pure of heart. Even in this part of the African continent, you see how my invitation is being received by them with gratitude and with great appreciation. How much love for me you are finding along the roads of Africa, here amid such great poverty, where houses are still made of mud, and my children often have neither food nor clothing. I receive from them more than what is given to me in other more advanced parts of the world. I receive a love that is open and sincere, a generous response, a correspondence that is enthusiastic and contented, prayer that is ardent and persevering. You have seen with great fervor they recite the Holy Rosary, and with what veneration they surround my images, how they place me in every room of their poor homes. To these I will manifest myself even more, by apparitions and by means of my maternal perseverance, aiding them and soliciting providence so that they may not lack food or and clothing. In these days, my little son, you have been able to see with your own eyes how the Heavenly Mother is working along the roads of this immense continent. The hour of my great wonders have come. These are the times of the triumph of my maternal love. For this reason I invite all from the five continents to enter the temple of my Immaculate Heart, that you may thus further my design. Message 278 The Medicine You Need December 8, 1983 Feast of the Immaculate Conception I am the Immaculate Conception. Participate, beloved sons, in the great joy of the whole Church as she contemplates today this singular privilege with which the Most Holy Trinity adorned me in view of my divine maternity. I am your mother, all beautiful, and as such I am invoked by you. I wish to clothe you with my own beauty, and I exhort you to follow after me on the road of grace and of holiness, of purity and virginity. It is sin alone that offends your interior beauty. For this reason I invite all of you to fight every day against so great an evil. Sin is a consequence of that original disorder by which you unfortunately have been prevented from being conceived and born as I was, holy immaculate. All of you were born burdened by the weight of this heavy and evil inheritance. You were released from it at the moment of your baptism but its consequences have remained with you, leaving you so very fragile and still so easily attracted by sin, to which you fall victim often during the course of your lives. The first thing you must do is to recognize sin as an evil, and to repent immediately with an act of pure and supernatural love. How many of my children today no longer recognize it as an evil? Often they welcome it as something good, and as such, they let it penetrate into their souls, into their hearts, into their lives. They are then no longer capable of repentance, and live habitually ineffected by this grave disease. You should resort to the medicine which the mercy of Jesus has prepared for you, the sacrament of reconciliation. Never, as in these times, has the practice of frequent confession been so necessary. Today, confession is disappearing from the lives and practice of so many of my children. 
and this is a sign of the crisis the Church is undergoing. By means of you, beloved ones, I wish to have the sacrament of reconciliation in the Church brought back to its splendor. I wish all of my children to hasten in great numbers to this fountain of grace and of divine mercy, and I invite you, my beloved, beloved ones, to confess frequently, and if possible, every week. <clears throat> I ask you to go to confession and be at the disposal of all of those who need this sacrament. Thoroughly educate all the faithful on the necessity of using this sacrament, above all when they find themselves in the state of mortal sin. This is the medicine you need if you wish to walk along the road of divine grace and of holiness. In this way you will follow your Heavenly Mother who in the train of her heavenly perfume would draw you after her, then you yourselves will be clothed in the splendor that is mine, and the life of Jesus can cast deep roots within your being. From the African continent, today I am addressing to all, with maternal solicitude, my invitation to walk on the road of love of holiness, fighting against Satan and all his Deductions. Soon, by means of you, I will be able to obtain the victory when I will crush the head of the infernal dragon, who today is ensnaring you in such a treacherous way. Message 279 His New Birth December 24, 1983 The Holy Night In the garden of my Immaculate Heart, Beloved sons, live the beautiful and precious hours of this holy night. Spend it in prayer, in silence, in the sweet company of myself and my spouse Joseph. Participate in the moments of ecstasy and ineffable joy lived by your Heavenly Mother as she pray, prepared to give you her divine child. Prayer enveloped me like a mantle. Silence took ever greater possession of my life, for the moment had come so long awaited, of his birth in time. Hence I did not remember the fatigue from the long journey we had completed, nor did I feel discouragement at the refusal to open a door to, to us. I was drawn by the secluded quiet of the grotto, and not troubled by its dreariness and want of everything. Then suddenly, paradise bent down on my nothingness, and I entered into a rapture of love and of life with the Heavenly Father. When I realized that I was still on earth, I now had in my arms my God, miraculously become my Son. Relive the industrious silence of my most chaste spouse, Joseph. His fatigue from conducting us down the long road, his persistence in looking for a house, his repeated patience with each refusal to open a door, his confidence as he led the way to a safe and protected place, his loving efforts to make the miserable grotto more hospitable, his prayerful awaiting for what was about to take place, and finally, his incomparable bliss as he leaned down to kiss and to adore his God, now born from me on this holy night. Let the light that appeared to the shepherds in the darkness of the night be upon you, and also the chance of the angels, and the joy of hearing the glad tidings. I announce good news to you, of great joy for all. Today a Savior is born for you, who is Christ the Lord. In the thickness of the night that today has fallen over the world, in the suffering now teaching the point, the darkness of the night that today has fallen over the world, in the suffering now reach the point of bloodshed that the church has been called to experience, while the doors of men and of people are again shut to Jesus who is returning in glory. Imitate your Heavenly Mother, her most loving spouse, Joseph, 
and the shepherds who immediately rose upon the invitation addressed to them by heaven. Pray and be silent, so that you can hear the voice of God and recognize the great signs He is sending you today, and by your personal collaboration further His merciful design. Like Joseph, devote yourselves to the task of attentively preparing all for His near, near return. Enkindle in hearts the light that has gone out. Open souls to grace and to love. Throw wide all the gates for Christ, who is coming. And following the example of the shepherds, whose simple little ones, so also you must not shut your ears to the voices still more than ever before being given you by heaven. Among them, know how to recognize and follow that of your heavenly mother, who, who in so many ways and with such great signs repeats to, your, to you her prophetic admonition, prepare yourselves for the return of Jesus in glory. His second birth is close at hand. Live with me the conclusive hours of this second coming, in trust, in prayer, in suffering that is accepted and enlightened in the expectation that the great day of the Lord will soon come. The desert of the world will open to receive the heavenly dew of this glorious reign of love and of peace. Message 280 Return to Your Redeemer December 31, 1983 The Last Day of the Year Spend the last, last hours of the year in silence, in recollection, and in prayer. Beloved sons, I am your Heavenly Mother, and I am presently arranging a great plan of love to hasten the advent of the triumph of my Immaculate Heart. For never, as in these moments, has the world been in such need of my maternal presence. The world is walking along the roads of hatred and obstinate rejection of God, of violence and immorality. Despite all the continuing invitations sent by the Divine Mercy, humanity persists in remaining deaf to every summons. The signs of the Lord The signs the Lord sends are neither understood nor accepted. The dangers pointed out by my Pope, who courageously and anxiously is predicting the storm awaiting you, are not believed. The messages which I give through simple and little souls chosen by me in every part of the world are not taken into consideration. The appearances which I am still making, often in far away and dangerous places, are ignored. And yet... You are only inches from your ruin, when all will be shouting for peace, a new world war. And yet, you are only inches from your ruin, when all will be shouting for peace, a new world war could suddenly fall upon you, spreading death and destruction everywhere, when they will say, tranquility and security then could begin the very greatest overthrow of peoples and individuals. How much blood I see flowing in all the streets of the world. How many of my poor children I see weeping because of the scourge of fire, famine, and terrible destruction. The Lord is at the door of this generation, and during the holy year of His redemption, He still knocks on the hearts of all, with insistence and love. Return to your God who wishes to save you and to lead you to peace. Return to your Redeemer. Open your hearts to Christ who is coming. The moments you are living are fraught with emergency. For this reason I would ask you to spend the next hours of the year on your knees in confident and unceasing prayer. Unite your voices with the powerful supplication of your Heavenly Mother, 
who is imploring for all the great miracle of divine mercy.